Need the perfect gift for the NFL fan in your life? Go to NFLshop.com and get their favorite player's jersey, personalized gifts, or new favorite hat. With daily holiday deals and the ultimate gift guide, NFLshop.com has you covered. Shop now for the most up-to-date assortment for all 32 teams. You'll choose from the largest selection of NFL gifts anywhere. NFL Shop is the destination for their favorite team's gear. Head to NFLshop.com today to start checking off your list. Have you ever wanted to know what's inside the vault at NFL Films? Well, I've got the keys, and I'm going to let you in. Join me, Andrea Kramer, for a new podcast featuring raw, unedited conversations between the legendary former head of NFL Films, Steve Sable, and some of the greatest figures in NFL history. Listen to NFL Films' Tales from the Vault on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. This is Logan Ryan, captain of the New York Giants and host of the NFL Player Podcast. We're trying something different. An active NFL player hosting a podcast, which is for NFL players and legends, as much as it for the fans. This is my first podcast, and I'm pretty excited about it. We're going to talk football, but also about lots of other issues that affect us all. We'll be talking with other players and legends, so it's going to be real and an honest look at life in the NFL. Listen to the NFL Players Podcast on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. This is My Guys in the Desert with Stormy Bonantoni on v the sports betting network. Welcome into My Guys in the Desert on a Monday. Stormy Bon and Tony with you live, as always, from Las Vegas. Coming out of our v studio at Circus Sportsbook. And we've got a fun show planned. It's Thanksgiving week, so there's so much to talk about every single day. We'll hear from my guys at the South Point, Jimmy Vaccaro and Vinny Maiulo. They're going to recap the weekend, tell us where the money is going on Thursday, as well as tonight, Monday Night Football, a big one to close out week 11 in the NFL. Bucks and New York Giants, Bucks laying 11 here at Circa, total in that one, 50. Also on the show, Mondays with Michael. Michael Lombardi, former NFL executive host of the Lombardi Line, is going to join us. And DraftKings Steve Buchanan is going to give us the lowdown, some of the best prop betting opportunities for that Monday night contest. But let's dive in to our top five stories, things you need to know that impact us as bettors, and a lot of things were going on in the NFL on Sunday. Let's dive right in. Bears head coach Matt Nagy said today that they're still evaluating quarterback Justin Fields' rib injury. It's too soon to say whether or not he'll play in the Thanksgiving game Thursday against the Lions. Bears minus three and a half point road favorites for the game. Ian Rappaport added that Fields avoided broken ribs after going down awkwardly in the third quarter of Chicago's eventual loss to the Ravens. While they are bruised and he is in pain, it's not as severe and his spleen, which was a concern, is intact. Total in that one, 41 and a half. Fields was replaced by Andy Dalton in the game. Dalton had two touchdowns, uh, made things really interesting late in the game. Could likely see him get the start. Uh, but he was Matt Nagy's pick at the beginning of the season, right? That's his guy. Uh, NFL Network's Ian Rappaport said it looks like C.D. Lamb had a concussion. Will miss the Cowboys game. Um, this Thursday as well. They're taking on the Raiders and a big loss for Dallas in that wide receiver core. Lamb exited their week 11 game against the Chiefs, slammed the back of his head on the turf uh, on a Dak Prescott pick at the end of the first half. Not great news, like I said. They're already without Amari Cooper, who's on the COVID-19 protocol list. But executive VP of the Cowboys, Stephen Jones, said on the radio today, Lamb started the protocol right away and that he's been feeling good so far. So they're not going to rule anything out just yet. It will come down to Thursday. Cutting it a little bit close. Cowboys laying seven at home against Vegas. And as if the Packers weren't already banged up, now we're going to add their left tackle, Elton Jenkins, to the list. Jenkins, who's already been starting in place of five-time Pro Bowler David Bakhtari, looks like he's going to be out for the season. Suffered a torn ACL. ESPN's Adam Schefter first reported this. He is done for the season. So now you got Aaron Jones, Alan Lazard, Rashawn Gary. The list goes on and on. And your quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, told reporters his toe injury has been very, very painful. Said that it's worse than turf toe. Also saying it's going to be another painful week ahead. He'll have a chance to heal up week 13 during the Packers' bye. But a hobbling quarterback and limited offensive options, a weak blindside uh potential third string tackle there. Not exactly the recipe for success that you want against a vicious pass rush from the LA Rams. Rams coming off a bye, by the way, getting one in Lambeau Field. 
Number four on our list, and this is an important factor to consider now when you're betting NHL, when you're betting NBA here moving forward because professional athletes who have not yet received one of the approved COVID-19 vaccines as of January 15th will not be allowed to travel north of the border for professional sports. This is coming from the Minister of Public Safety in Canada. The way things sit currently, NBA players who aren't fully vaccinated are permitted to enter the country to play. So if you're you know, the Raptors in Toronto or what have you, under a national interest exemption is what it's called. But now their Prime Minister um, uh, of Health and Safety is saying in January, now due to widespread availability of the COVID-19 vaccine, players who remain unvaccinated will not be eligible to play in Toronto. So just keep that in mind specifically for NHL and NBA games. The majority of NHL players are vaccinated. We do know that, but just something to keep in mind. Tonight, we already told you, Monday night football ahead. The New York football giants at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've seen this spread anywhere between 10 and a half and 11 and a half today. Total 49 and a half. Also seen it at 50. Bucks looking to bounce back from a bad loss to the Washington football team last week. They were double-digit favorites, lost by double digits, two losses in a row now for Tom Brady and company. But that company does look to get a little bit better. It appears Rob Gronkowski is likely to be back. Obviously, he's been dealing with a back injury recently, was a full participant at practice last Thursday and Friday, then more limited on Saturday, but looks like he should be good to go. Tampa also still without Antonio Brown, and it looks like defensive lineman Vita Vea, who's doubtful, is likely not to play. Also good to note, the Bucs secondary that's been a weakness this year, Richard Sherman included in that on the IR, so he's out for the foreseeable future, at least the next three weeks. As for New York, star running back Saquon Barkley is set to return from ankle injury. It's kept him out the last four games. Wide receivers Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Toney were also removed from the injury report this week. They're slated to play. Sterling Shepard, however, still inactive for the second straight week dealing with a quad giant six and three three and six on the year rather but two of those wins in their last three games against Carolina and Vegas just a three-point loss to Kansas City sandwiched in between so can they keep it up tonight we shall see and like I said this is a game we're going to talk about throughout the entire show when Michael Lombardi joins us we're going to get his official pick we'll also talk to Jimmy Vaccaro and Vinny Maiulo about where the money is going at the sports book and later on in the show, get those prop betting opportunities from Steve. Well, everybody on a Monday always comes into their shows talking about overreaction Monday and giving everybody like that's not what we're going to do here today. We are doing underreaction Monday because for as crazy as NFL Sunday was, and there were a number of major upsets like we've seen week in and week out in this in this um, football season. In the grand scheme of things, there were a lot of games this week. I feel like the wins didn't really mean anything or a loss didn't really mean anything for a particular team. So we're just going to dive into a couple of those different angles, starting with the Vikings win over the Packers. To me, the Vikings are not better than the Packers, right? Like, and they love to play some close games. Every single game of the Vikings this year, except for one, has been determined one side or another by a touchdown or less. Um, their only exception was that two score win against Seattle. But I feel like everybody's kind of losing their minds that they upset Green Bay. They beat the Chargers. Well, the Chargers are a roller coaster. We saw that last night. Green Bay is beat up. And I know good day for Kirk Cousins. He lit it up. But Aaron Rodgers still outdueled him on the other side with a bad toe like we were talking about. He had 40 more yards passing, four touchdowns to Kirk Cousins, three. I feel like the Packers are injury riddled, have injuries all over the place. And just because of one win isn't going to change anything for me. Packers still minus 1200 to win the NFC North Vikings sitting there at plus 650. But that was one, one game specifically. I just looked at and was like, the Vikings have played close games all year long. I'm not going to overreact to a win when they should, they probably should get that one. Are the 49ers legit? And we all know we had a funeral for my San Francisco 49ers on the program not too long ago. And my dad's over here texting me that, Stormy, you put the 49ers to bed too early. Look at what they're doing now. Look at what they're doing now. Come on. I mean, look at what they're – so they just beat the Jaguars. Congratulations. Very excited for you. But that's that's not something I'm going to get excited about. And it's a similar – Kind of song and dance here to the Eagles, which is a team I'm going to talk about in a little bit as well. But two wins to start the year against bad teams, Lions and Philly. Four straight losses after that, 
injuries piled up. Now they're winners in three of their last four. So everybody's like, oh my gosh, the 49ers are really good again. Two of those three wins are against Chicago and Jacksonville. And the other win is against the LA Rams, who while obviously they are a very, very good team, sitting among the top in the NFC West, in the NFC, they're solid. They're also a team that San Francisco has beat five times in a row, and they, what for whatever reason, in that division had their number. So those are their three wins in their last four games. 49ers getting healthier. What they do have to look forward to is a pretty easy strength of schedule coming up. Bengals, Falcons, Seahawks, Texans on that list. Um, oh, I just got a text from my dad literally saying, really talk that way about my 49ers. Ugh. They're my 49ers too, okay? Big game this week, though. You're not wrong. Okay, the other team I was talking about, though, in that slew, Eagles, because their schedule has been kind of wonky, right? They started the year one and four, two and five. Now, winners in three of their last four, and they have been a lot better this season since that 44-6 stomping against Detroit. Um, but a lot of the talk I'm hearing after yesterday is that, hey, Eagles, playoff bound, baby. They're getting in. Look at how good, look at Jalen Hurts. Look at what he's doing. Jalen Hurts is a great running back. I don't know if he's a great quarterback. Three touchdowns on the ground, 70 yards, but 147 yards in the air. You score 40 points and have 147 pass yards. Odds to make the playoffs on DraftKings have improved, but still minus 150 to miss, plus 120 to make. So odds makers aren't really sold either way, but agree it's less likely. Kind of on that bubble, second in the AFC East behind the Eagle, behind the Cowboys rather, but my big reason for the no is I like the football team more and they still have to play them twice. They still have to play Dallas again as well, but I like the football team more in that spot. And that's actually another team. Like I'm, I'm not sure where I sit on Washington in general right now. I do know that I like them more than the Eagles in that division, but I'm still debating on whether or not I should over or underreact on the success they've had of late big win, obviously against the Buccaneers last time around. And then the win over the Carolina, that was good for Ron Rivera and Taylor Heineke. It was weird. That game, we all thought it was going to be kind of Cam Newton's redemption in Carolina, and it ended up being Ron and Taylor Heineke's last one here. Don't give up so fast on the Titans, okay? They were awful against Houston. I know. But think about this. Like, how often, like, it was bad. How often does a team average 3.1 yards per play, 107 yards passing, and win? But that's what happens when you have five turnovers, and Tannehill threw four interceptions. It was just a tough game. A tough game, not going to be the end-all, be-all for Tennessee. Everyone has a bad game. And I think that the biggest takeaway so far from this week was literally that every team can be beaten. That was for sure my takeaway. The Titans have a big matchup coming up this week in the AFC, going to Foxborough, getting five and a half at the New England Patriots. And hey, everybody, we talked about these Thursday games that are coming up. VEASAN Black Friday is coming up as well. Right now, when you sign up for our $99 midseason football special, you also get a $20 credit to the VEASAN store. Get all of our expert sports betting analysis, insets, insights, data for the rest of the football season, plus $20 to buy sports betting hats, shirts, mugs, other gear. VEASAN.com slash subscribe. Go sign up. Plenty more coming up. Stick with us here on My Guys in the Desert. Caesars Sportsbook is the greatest sports betting app of all time, people. Why? Because Caesars makes everyone feel like an emperor. When you place your bets, win or lose, you can earn more with Caesars rewards. Dining, getaway, stays, so many perks, people. Caesars Sportsbook. Visit Caesars.com to see if sports betting is available where you live. 21 plus, 18 plus in D.C. must be located in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, Maryland, Michigan, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, or Washington, D.C. Void where prohibited. No one to stop before you start. Illinois, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, West Virginia. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER or West Virginia. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Gambling problem? Arizona? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Colorado, D.C., Nevada? Call 1-800-522-4700. Iowa? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Indiana? Call 1 1-800-9 with it. Louisiana, call 877-770-STOP. Michigan, call 1-800-270-7117. New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. Tennessee, call Tennessee Redline at 1-800-889-9789. Virginia, call 1-888-532-3500. Copyright 2021, Caesars Entertainment. This is Logan Ryan, captain of the New York Giants and host of the NFL Player Podcast. We're trying something different. An active NFL player hosting a podcast, which is for NFL players and legends, as much as it's for the fans. This is my first podcast, and I'm pretty excited about it. We're going to talk football 
but also about lots of other issues that affects us all. We'll be talking with other players and legends, so it's going to be real and an honest look at life in the NFL. Listen to the NFL Players Podcast on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. I want to get back to being in my community group. I want to continue having a soccer season. So I can throw parties again. (laughs) So I can go to her parties. (laughs) It'd really be nice to dine in instead of getting delivery for a change. So I can feel safe and protected for myself and my students. We each have our own reason for why we're getting vaccinated against COVID-19. What will yours be? Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org for information on the COVID-19 vaccines. It's up to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council. You're listening to My Guys in the Desert with Stormy Bonantoni on v the sports betting network. Welcome back. This segment of My Guys in the Desert brought to you by Zinn Nicotine Pouches, a fresh way to enjoy nicotine without all the baggage of cigarettes, dip, or vape. No more smelling like an ashtray, no spit cups, no more batteries to charge or leaky equipment to deal with. Zinn Nicotine Pouches are smoke-free, spit-free alternative that's available in 10 varieties like spearmint, wintergreen, citrus, and more. And now for your convenience, each variety comes in two strengths, so you can easily find the satisfaction level that's right for you. Zinn, America's number one nicotine pouch, is available now in over 100 thousand locations nationwide so it's never been easier to find your zin head on over to zin.com slash find to locate a store near you that's zyn.com slash f-i-n-d warning this product contains nicotine nicotine is an addictive chemical stormy bond and tony with you and it is time as we always do on a monday to recap the wildest moments of college football saturday and you know where we all have to start on this one ohio state making Michigan State look like an FCS team out there. 49 to nothing at halftime, which is actually the same score as Georgia against an FCS team in Charleston Southern. Um, But after 30 minutes, Ohio State outgained the Spartans 655 to 244. C.J. Stroud, nearly 400 pass yards and six touchdowns in the first half alone, finished the day. 32 of 35 on the season now for Stroud. 36 touchdowns, just five INTs. He is now your odds-on favorite over Bryce Young to win this year's Heisman at minus 200. And uh, the nation's leading rusher, by the way, out of Michigan State, Kenneth Walker, his stock taking a hit down to 28 to 1 after being an absolute non-factor in the game. Six carries for 25 yards. And Stroud's about to be on the big stage again this week, one of the biggest games of the year against Michigan. Uh, Ohio State laying seven or eight, depending on where you see that number this week. And one team cements itself in the CFP now. Race, as we go with there with their contention. Another team is Dunzo in the Oregon Ducks. And as they got upset by Utah this week, I'm looking at one specific play as the wildest moment in this one because we all kind of thought it was possible that Utah could win the game. Not to that extent, but Oregon already was scoreless, right? Missing two field goals, down 21-0 in the first half. They punt the ball away with 11 seconds to go. Ball goes right to Britton Covey. Dodges like five tackles on his own, gets some good blocking, sprints the tightrope on the far sideline, takes it to the house. Love it. 28 nothing at halftime over the number three ranked team in the country. 38 to seven final. And, you know, we already talked about my dad this segment. Give him credit. He had his, that minus three Utah's lock of the week. Get rich with rich. Last one here, lowly Missouri upsets Florida as 10 point dogs and sends Dan Mullen packing out of town. I know the Gators have had a bad year, but the reason why this is so wild to me is because of the success that Mullen's had at Florida. 34 and 15 overall. New York's uh, New Year's Six Bowls each of the last three years and went toe-to-toe with the eventual national champion Alabama for the SEC title last year. That 694 win percentage was the highest of any coach at Florida, not named Spurrier or Meyer since 1924. Oof, yikes. Mullen, given the opportunity to coach this Friday against Florida State, but will not. Gators two-point favorites in the swamp. From the swamp, to the set as we welcome in our guys at the South Point, Jimmy Vaccaro and Vinny Maiulo. Thanks for joining us. It was a wild college football week. It was a wild NFL week. Give me your guys' perspective from the books. How did everything go on your end of the table? Young lady, nice to talk to you again. Uh, we had a wonderful weekend, if you're on the bookmaker side. Uh, the two key games on Saturday, which we won used very easily. Sometimes when you win those type of games, it takes a while. But uh, uh, the Ohio State game was just an – they kept taking the dog on that spot, and obviously they had no choice. And this, the one that really, really pushed it over late at night was uh, uh, was Oregon. They came in on Oregon like the game was over. So when you 
when you start off and you have two what you would consider your bigger games of the day and, and you win both of them, we actually uh, won both easily. Uh, we glided along through the day. It was a wonderful, wonderful Saturday as far as the bookmakers were concerned. But like I said, those two games were monster games and uh, we won them easy. Hey, Stormy. Good uh, good to be with you, as Jimmy said. Yeah, and then uh, carried over to Sunday. Sunday was a good day, uh, kind of back and forth morning, and then mm-hmm. uh, wound up surviving the morning. Uh, but in the afternoon, the, the big game in the afternoon uh, here at South Point was uh, was the Cardinals game. I mean, uh, you, you talk about – I know we'll talk a little bit more about some adjustments we had to make, uh, but that game wound up going up to Seahawks 5, mm-hmm. uh, considering uh, – that that's a, that's a substantial move, considering uh, that we opened the, the Cardinals as – Two and a half point favorites, yeah. but that that was a big decision here, uh, and uh, really what uh, what made the afternoon. Well, you know what? Uh, sometimes, like I said, you you play where you know just let me split these big games that yeah. we have, and we'll be happy because obviously you're laying eleven to ten. But we got our ass kicked real good early when the the one guy came at post some uh, not a little before post some bet a hundred thousand you know on the against the Packers there. And the Vikings, yeah. That was a crazy game, no matter who you had, but. Uh, we got it all back with the late one when uh, the Steelers came from, obviously, from nowhere. I look at that, no chance. But then I, I know it was a thing to do, but, like, how about if they'd have kicked a field goal with uh, three seconds left in the game <laughs> to put the game on seven? Jimmy would be talking a different tune. But uh, the only thing, like I've been saying every week, Storm, is, like, people keep coming out of the woodwork and, and get ready for a monster, monster Thursday through Sunday coming up because, as Vincennes will jump in here, too, uh, the Thanksgiving days used to be quiet. They're not quiet anymore. Well, well let's, let's take it there. Like how busy is a Thanksgiving weekend in Vegas? There is a ton of action. We've got NFL, we've got college football. It, it's going to be a busy time, but fun, no doubt. Well, when you, when you factor in stormy too, that it's rivalry weekend for a, a lot mm-hmm. of schools, right? And, uh, Uh, Those games, which with those games, now what's going to add to those games Mm -hmm. is that they have playoff implications as well. And again, there's uh, those games will be booked just like NFL games as far, you know, from our perspective. I mean, they're they're as big. They're as popular. There was a time when uh, when Thanksgiving was, you know, more of a family time was a a quieter weekend. But I'd say in the last decade, Jimmy, we've seen Thanksgiving grow with the three pro games, you've got a couple of uh, uh, good college games that day mm-hmm. leading up to Friday and Saturday and Sunday, all the NBA, the NHL, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and uh, of course, college basketball. And one of the tournaments here, don't forget the Maui mm-hmm. Invitational is here this weekend as well. Jimmy, uh, Thanksgiving, one of the busiest, most bet wow. weekends of the year. Yeah, let's go back to Sean Menard when they win that game <laughs> against Virginia <laughs> way back when. Things started to kick off then, but as Vinny was saying, it, it's just it's something you can't even like describe unless you've been there. And we have in both cases here. And where Thanksgiving, you know, the Thursday was okay, but it keeps building up. It's a mini, mini March Madness from yep. Thursday to Sunday. And we welcome it because obviously uh, the thing you have to do in a sports book, first of all, is create money, create play, create things that obviously give it people the chance. Yeah. And what you're finding out if we just walk through the crowd uh, on Thanksgiving Day, you'll get this. You'll get two answers. Well, Jimmy, we ate early so I could come out. Or, Jimmy, <laughs> we're going to eat late so I can watch most of the game. So it, it, it's fun to be around, I can tell you that. And it doesn't make me, like, say, you're getting old, Jimmy, because those things still boost me up pretty good. You got to strategize. I love that. Strategize the timing on the meal before you get to the book. And, Vinny, I got to <laughs> tell you, I was really, really impressed with the way you said rivalry week. I always struggle with it. But- <laughs> Don't ask me to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a toughie. But speaking of those games, I did want to just ask yep. about one specific game because Ohio State, Michigan, obviously a monster game that's coming up for mm-hmm. rivalry week, as I say it slow every syllable. Um, but is that one that you guys had to do a little bit of extra thinking on the number after the way Ohio State just put that pounding on Michigan State like they did this week? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. And it, and again, the only regret we have is that that game is a nine o'clock game, uh, Pacific time, uh, nine o'clock a.m. Pac- uh, uh, time on uh, uh, on Saturday morning. It starts off the rotation. Um, just a, probably a little bit of an adjustment and uh, more of an adjustment because of, of the way Ohio State dominated the other day, but have been playing much better lately. In fact, uh, I've got to moved up to the number two spot ahead of Alabama in my power ratings after these last couple of weeks. Uh, so we opened at eight. That's where it sits. I think it'll be a good, uh, good betting game. Uh, wouldn't shock me though uh, if we wind up needing the home, uh, the home team in this one, Jimmy. But uh, this will be as big a game. Like I said, it'll be bet like an NFL mm-hmm. game uh, will on Sunday. 
Yeah, you're exactly right. And I still believe, of course, we'll see, because obviously these things have curveballs every now and then where you think you know exactly what's going to happen, where, where the number's going to go to. I can't see this game at least climbing to nine, only because the general yeah. public will be in. Now, the smarts will be sticking around. They'll be saying, but so let's say it goes eight and a half for nine. Their thing is like, well, let, let, when it gets to 10, I'm going to grab yeah, it. Let's but, see. Uh, I think with an early game like that, uh, I'm guessing we're going to need the uh, the dog for a big yep. number. Mm -hmm. Well, time flies when you're going fun. The segment's going by so much faster than I anticipated. But before we get out of here, Giants Bucks tonight. Where, where's the handle at? What kind of betting have we seen? And where's your liability? Uh, Zerosville. In other words, it's not a big decision right now. What usually happens, Storm, is like if there's a, we, having a big Sunday like we did, it knocked out everything coming to Monday. Now, usually, not usually, if it comes where like the, the joints get blasted on on the uh, Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon games, then naturally the Monday name mm -hmm. has more live tickets. So that is jurisdiction. Let me get out of the way here. But right now, I looked at the screen the first week. The worst we could lose right now is $19,000. Usually, you'll get a time where no matter who wins, you blow <laughs> about 50000 So it's going to be an easy one to hand Cap and yeah, we'll wind up needing that dog for a fair amount of but but nothing big. Yep, 11 is where it opened, 11 is where it sits. Uh, to Jimmy's point, um, I think a little bit more money uh, on the Giants' money. Some folks thinking that perhaps uh, the uh, the Giants getting healthier, but you may see Gronkowski as well. Mm -hmm. Be a good, uh, good betting game tonight, yeah, for sure. Thank you guys so much for the time. You're the best. Take That's care, Jimmy Stormy. and Vinny over at the South Point. When we come back, Michael Lombardi on the program, as well as stardom or sit up, some backup quarterbacks. We have some question marks about. You're listening to My Guys of the Desert with Stormy Bonantoni on v Sin, the sports betting network. I know you're looking for more sports betting discussion around your local team, so Bet Rivers has you covered. Bet Rivers has launched a series of city casts designed to tackle sports betting from the local perspective. There are city casts in Chicago, Denver, Detroit, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, LA, and now New York. So subscribe to your local city cast wherever you get your podcast. Back here live from Las Vegas, my guys in the desert, Stormy Bond and Tony with you. Time for Stardom or Sidum. Our producer Stephanie is giving me a couple questions about some backup quarterbacks that could potentially start again this week. So should they or shouldn't they? Starting with, if Jared Goff can't go against the Bears, dealing with an oblique injury, is Tim Boyle good enough? No, he's not. Absolutely not. 100% would sit him if they could. And I don't understand how the NFL franchise that already has such a bad starter also has one of the worst backup situations in the league. Boyle had 77 yards passing, no touchdowns, two picks in the game against Cleveland this weekend. But I don't know why that's a surprise. He could hardly hold on to the starting job at UConn on 245 career passes with the Huskies, one touchdown, 13 picks. He transferred to an FCS school and was still bad with more interceptions than touchdowns. Like, seriously, what would the Lions be without DeAndre Swift? Just throw him in at Wildcat. Maybe he can Maybe he can play quarterback for you. Seriously, there's somebody that can just learn the playbook in a crunch. I know it's a short week, but there'd be somebody willing to get in there that'd be better than Tim Boyle. There's got to be some other options. Lions hosting the Bears on Thanksgiving, plus three and a half. On the other end of that matchup, looks like it's probably going to be Andy Dalton if Justin Fields is unable to go. So should he start or say, I'd, yeah, I'd start him. Like, obviously, he was Matt Nagy's pick to be the starter at the beginning of the season anyways. He's, you know, not going to be anybody's long-term answer anywhere. But I think he was good. He bled the, made things interesting in the game at the end of the thing. Had two touchdown drives. Um, did have that lost fumble. But 201 yards, two touchdowns, I'd start him. Joe Flacco, uh, the Jets are reportedly feeling out where Zach Wilson will be this week as he recovers from a sprained PCL. Start him or sit him? I would start him because if you're unsure if Zach Wilson is ready to go and he's already missed a number of weeks with this injury, why change your trajectory now? I mean, I still think that it's kind of a bummer that they didn't give Mike White more of an opportunity. He had an amazing game and a terrible game. Like, give him a chance to see what his middle of the row is. Flacco hasn't been terrible, but not enough to beat Miami. That one sack fumble, oh my gosh, he got rocked. Still nearly 300 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, playing a Texans team now that's bound to regress. I'd start him. Jets plus two and a half in Houston. Uh, Trevor Simeon, last one here. I'm like 50-50 on this guy, because what are we doing here? Um, what's this whole Taysom Hill situation? Didn't he compete for the starting job with Jameis Winston at the start of the year? And I, I know he had the concussion stuff, so he was held out for a little while. Now it's a little bit of a, of, a, of a foot, maybe. But if he's healthy this week, why are we not giving Taysom Hill a chance? Statistically, Simeon isn't doing god-awful, but he's not doing great. 
had three touchdowns, two interceptions this past game. But but what am I missing? I thought Peyton was in love with Taysom Hill. Peyton, I, is Sean Peyton not in love with Taysom Hill anymore? Is his mood changed? I don't know. Interesting Thanksgiving Day slate, though, this year. And while we're on the subject, give a nice happy Thanksgiving week to our guy, Michael Lombardi, former NFL executive and, of course, host of the Lombardi line here on Visa. You're, you're a big Thanksgiving guy, Michael, right? You like it? Oh, absolutely. Who doesn't like Thanksgiving? I mean, it's just the best of all holidays. You start the holiday season, you got good football on, you got turkey, you got all sorts of things. No, it's great. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. What's Happy your, Thanksgiving to you, too. Thank you kindly. What's your favorite thing? Are you a big turkey guy? You prefer ham? What's your go-to? Oh, uh, You know, I like the turkey. I like the Italian part of the meal, mm. too. I like a little bit of everything. I mean, I'm a food guy, so, I mean, it's hard to get me off of any of that. So, it's good. I heard your conversation. Taysom Hill didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. He was ruled out on Friday. They dressed him for the game only in an emergency because in case uh, Simeon got hurt. I'm with you, but I don't think he's going to play this week either. I think that mm. foot injury is a real problem, but I think that's why – they had to endure. Trevor Simeon shouldn't be in it. All those names you're reading off. I mean, Boyle shouldn't be an NFL quarterback. And Trevor Simeon, I mean, he was so bad against the Eagles. It, it, it really, the score doesn't do it justice. Well, let's talk about the backup bowl then on Thanksgiving with Boyle and Andy Dalton. Lions plus three and a half in that game. But like, I'm so, what's going to happen here? Like, what's good? That just looks like such a gross game to me. And then you've got two quarterbacks who aren't the guys that you want them to be. What's your feel for how that one will play out? Well, I mean, if Baker Mayfield could have completed a pass, they, they would have scored more points. There is one of the worst non-covers of all time, really. <laughs> I mean, the, the Lions the last two weeks have thrown for 77 yards in two, each game. 77 yards in each game, once with Goff and then once with Boyle. I mean, Boyle was just terrible. But so was Goff against Pittsburgh. I mean, like, let's make no mistake about it. But in, indoors, I, I think to me – if Justin Fields is healthy against a very slow Detroit defense, I would have played Justin Fields. But, okay. you know, I think with Andy Dalton, you know, they're going to give him a chance to, to you know, move the ball. And look, the, the Lions defense played really well. Baker Mayfield shouldn't have been playing yesterday because he couldn't hit the broad side of a bar. He was so inaccurate with the football. They'd have been better off playing Case Keenum. We love Baker, don't we? We just love him. He's great. Uh, doesn't all of the, these quarterback questions, though, Steph and I were talking about this in the break, doesn't it raise the question to you as to why has Cam Newton just been sitting out? All of these teams are having so many quarterback issues, and Cam Newton's just been ready and waiting in the wings, and he's had a pretty good start in Carolina. Well, I think a lot of people just don't want to go train another guy, you know? And they, they have their guy. We have Boyle. You know, Newton's going to be not that much better. I mean, it's all about – it's a political – Really, it's more political than it is anything. And that's what happens in the NFL. And so, you know, you see it and, you know, it, it just does. I mean, it's just a shame Camp should have been playing, but he wasn't. Well, do any of these other lines on Thanksgiving intrigue you? We obviously dove into Chicago, Detroit, but Vegas, Dallas, Buffalo, New Orleans, anything stand out to you? Yeah, you know, I was kind of interested in, and when you break it down, I, I think this line for, uh, the, the Cowboy game is going to move. I think it'll tick above seven. I really do. Mm. And I think if it does, it, it, you know, look, the Raiders have not been very good on offense the last few days, last few weeks. I mean, they haven't scored over 20 points. They've been inadequate. They haven't been able to, they can't block up front. Their offensive line has really struggled. And defensively, I don't think they're going to be able to slow down. I mean, Dak didn't play well last week, but I think they're going to have a hard time really slowing down this Cowboy attack. Uh, the over-under is set at 51 in this game. I think it'll tick down just a slight because I think that, you know, I'm not sure the Raiders are going to be able to protect well enough in the game. Is this just kind of the start of the fallout for the Raiders this season? Is it doomed to fail now? It feels like they've really been feeling the effects of all of their off-field issues recently. I think the problem with the Raiders has been pretty clear, clearly that they, they never were as good as they should have been. I mean, they've won two games in overtime. Right, early in the season, the Ravens game they could have easily lost. Right, we saw that game, and then and then we saw them, and then we saw them beat the Miami Dolphins in overtime. But to me, I think their defense has never been what everybody thought it was. Uh, I think the Gus Bradley scheme is kind of outdated. And offensively, you know, they haven't scored. Gruden left, and they had a hard time. Really, they're one of the worst teams in the red zone. Red zone, one of the worst teams on third down. They're 25th in third down. They're 28th in the red zone. 
a lot of that is coaching. And I think losing Gruden, who was their play caller and play mm-hmm. designer, I think it does hurt them. Yeah, and the connection and support I know he had with Derek Carr. Derek had just those absurd, great numbers to start the season have really mm-hmm. fallen off. But while we continue our look ahead, Monday Night Football tonight, Giants coming out of the bye, taking on the Bucks. They're getting 11. Bucks 4-0 and at home this year, 3-1 and ATS. But we all know the Giants have been really good against the spread as road dogs as well. What are you really honing in on as you watch this game tonight? Oh, I think, you know, I want to see what Brady does. Uh, you know, can Brady will have Gronk back. And, and then I think you got to really take an event, take a look at the Tampa Bay Bucks defense. You know, how well are they playing? Can they cover in the back end? I mean, the, the Giants are completely healthy. Can Daniel Jones play fast? Can he handle the pressure? There's going to be a lot of pressure. But without Vita Vey inside, mm-hmm. how well do the Bucks defense handle that? I think he's a huge loss for them. And I think it's really going to hurt them. I think the Giants have a better chance to cover. I don't think they can win the game, but I do think they can cover. That was what I was curious about was the number, just because we all kind of assume this is going to be a get-right spot for the Buccaneers. But that plus 11, those double digits have been tricky for the big favorites. Yeah, I know. And it's you know that's why I think you got to take the points. I do think the Giants can move the football. I really do. Hey, who's the best team in the AFC? Can you help me out? Who is the best team in the AFC? I, I, that, that's a hard one. I think right now the Chiefs have that look a little bit like the way the Tampa Bay Bucks did. They're kind of coming into play, and I think, it's, I think they look like they could be. The way they play defense the last five weeks is pretty impressive. That's one thing I don't think that Kansas City has gotten enough credit for because they were so bad defensively to start the year. But the last few games, they look like a different group. Yeah, no doubt. They're playing much since the second half. You know, they're down to Washington 13 to 10 in the first half. They go into halftime. They score 21 straight points since that game. Now, they gave up 27 against the Titans, but that was a little misleading. They gave it up in the first half, but a lot of it was because the offense turned the ball over. But since those games, they have played very good on defense. Great stuff, as always, Michael. Appreciate you, and enjoy Turkey Day. Have fun this week. Thank you. Bye, Stormy. That's Michael Lombardi, host of the Lombardi line here on VSIN, former longtime NFL executive. When we come back, we'll continue our Monday Night Football talk. Steve Buchanan of DraftKings joins the program talking about some of the best prop betting opportunities and be better. Did they or didn't they? I challenge some players. We'll see how they worked out. Back here on My Guys in a moment. Have you ever wanted to know what's inside the vault at NFL Films? Well, I've got the keys and I'm going to let you in. Join me, Andrea Kramer, for a new podcast featuring raw, unedited conversations between the legendary former head of NFL Films, Steve Sable, and some of the greatest figures in NFL history, like Troy Aikman. Can you remember your feelings in that first Super Bowl? You talked to Michael and Emmett about that. About, you know, just it was hard to breathe in the beginning. I couldn't, yeah, I. I I was hyperventilating in the huddle. And the first pass to Michael, I threw it about 20 yards over his head, and I was thinking, holy cow, this is going to be, I mean, I, I, I got to get out of this somehow. Steve interviewed over 200 of the biggest names in football history, and you'll get to hear them in their entirety for the first time. Listen to NFL Films' Tales from the Vault on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Guys of the Desert with Stormy Bonantoni on v the sports betting network. Rolling along here on My Guys in the Desert. Stormy Bonantoni with you live from Las Vegas at a Circus Sportsbook. Time for Be Better, Did They or Didn't They? Every week on the program, I challenge some NFL players and teams to step their game up. Now let's see if how they responded to the call. Starting with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I I was talking about their defense. I called out their defense this past week, and I will say better but still not good enough. They played well for long stretches, did hold the Bears to just 13 points this Sunday, but another week where they keep giving up the big play. Most notably, Andy Dalton comes in for Justin Fields. 49-yard strike to Marquise Goodwin. Gave Chicago the lead late, but the offense had to bail them out. It was not the defense saving the day. Ravens D still among the fewest takeaways in the NFL 
Not good company to be hanging out there with the Jags and Jets. Ravens this week, four, minus four and a half, hosting the Browns on Sunday night football. So we'll see if they can continue to elevate their game. The Bengals, another team I asked to be better, much better. Look at you, Cincinnati, after back-to-back -back bad losses against the Jets and Browns as favorites. A necessary win against a reeling Raiders team. Game opened around Pickham, a 32-13 final. It was a bit of a slow starter, just 10-6 at halftime, but dialed it up for 19 points in the fourth quarter. Balanced offense. Defensively held the Raiders 1-7 on third down. No self-inflicted wounds, just one penalty for five yards. Now back in playoff position, fifth in the AFC. Bengals, you were better. Thank you. And last one on my list, I challenged Tom Brady. I know he's a name that we don't expect to see on this list very often, and he's playing tonight, so we shall see. He's thrown four picks in back-to-back -back losses now. One against the Washington football team as double-digit favorites. Big loss. Now, that's coming after a six-game stretch where this guy had a 17-to-1 touchdown-to-interception ratio is tonight the get-right spot for Tampa. Tom, we shall see. Why don't we just ask our DraftKings NHL NFL analyst, Steve Buchanan, about this as he joins the show. Uh, what was your, before we talk about Tom Brady and the Monday Night Football matchup, what was your just biggest surprise from Sunday, Steve? Because, I mean, there was a ton. We got the Titans and Texans. We got the Colts over the Bills. Like, what is happening in the NFL this year? Yeah, exactly what is happening. And, you know, if you're betting on any games, when you go to dinner on Thanksgiving and talk to your family, let them know you're still betting the NFL. You're a brave person. Brave people need to be recognized. So let them know how brave you are. But at this point, it has to be that the Bills are looking extremely beatable, right? Like they could have been beat by the Dolphins a couple of weeks ago. They were beat by the Jaguars uh, two weeks ago. Now they got beat by the Colts, you know, teams that you wouldn't expect to beat the Bills who were, you know, perceived to be the number one team in the AFC. So I think the, the Bills, like, you know, latest downfall has to be the biggest surprise because a lot of people thought that was going to be the team in the AFC. Yeah, we might have to redo our contender or pretenders list because the Bills <laughs> are just a different team right now. I'm glad you brought up this Thanksgiving meal thing because we were talking in the break and Steve has a turkey hot take that I don't know how I feel about. Let the people know. Yeah, turkey's just absolutely awful. Like, oh why can't we? <laughs> why can't we make Thanksgiving be about like honey glazed ham? Who hates a honey glazed ham? Probably nobody. If you do hate honey glazed ham, you're probably a psycho. And I wouldn't want you at my dinner table anyways. But honey glazed ham, that should be the main course in Thanksgiving. Just but, change it up. But why change can't you up. have both? I don't understand the hate on turkey. It's not like it's deli turkey and you're just putting it on a regular sandwich. Like, this is legit the hearty stuff. Good. Golden brown. Overrated. 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 It's absolutely overrated. I, I want no, no part of it. And you know what? My birthday sometimes falls on Thanksgiving. The audacity that I have to eat turkey on my birthday, my day of birth. Well, happy almost birthday, first of all. But yeah, that's just rude. Disrespectful. <laughs> how dare, how dare the pilgrims set you up for this turkey day? Right. <laughs> um, let's talk about the night game coming up. Prime time tonight. Giants taking on the Tampa Bay Bucks. Seen this line yeah. between 10 and a half and 11 and a half today. What side are you on? Yeah, look, so look, I mean, really, you can do this with any game in the NFL, but it's specific, specific, oh, wow, specifically, there we go, <laughs> this game with the Buccaneers and the Giants. Like, you can fit any narrative into this one to take a side. I'm just going to simply bet on the team. That's the better team on the field, and that's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like, you can say that, you know, Tom Brady doesn't cover spreads in primetime games. Obviously, that's a trend there. But in the three games that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have covered so far this season, it's when they're 10-point favorites or more. And they're good at home. They're averaging almost 40 points per game at home. That is absolutely absurd. This New York Giants secondary is not going to be able to stop Tom Brady. So it's a big spread. Nobody wants to take favorites right now because favorites continuously lose in the NFL. But with the two teams on the field, I'll side with the Buccaneers. All right. I got you. Yeah, there's been some hesitancy with those big favorites, including the Bucs after what happened with the Washington football team. But like you said, as favorites at home, they have been really, really good. But then you also got another trend on the other end with uh, the Giants being a good road dog covering team. So interesting dynamic there. But based on what you said about Tampa Bay's points totals when they are at home, are you rolling with the over as well? I mean, it would be really weird if I wasn't rolling with the over. How did make, I just had to double check. I had to double check. Right. No, of course. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I don't like turkey. Did you expect that? No. Okay, so you have to make sure. But with the over here, I do like this one here at 49 and a half. That's a number I would be looking to target the over. I think the Giants can do enough to help push this over with how well the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 
are at home. Like I said, they're five and four hitting the over specifically at home. They're three and one with the over in that one there as well. So, and, and look, this Tampa Bay Buccaneers de- secondary, not very good either. Not saying that, you know, Daniel Jones is a gunslinger, but the Giants should be able to do enough to help this uh, hit the over. So I like the over in this game. Yeah, their secondary hasn't been great dealing with a lot of injuries. You can definitely see it as an opportunity spot. But speaking of the Buccaneers offense and Tom Brady, I mentioned him coming in. I challenge him to be better because these last two games, he's thrown a lot more picks. They're pretty uncharacteristic for him. Um, Is this a get right spot for him in the touchdown category? I know his prop is at two and a half over under plus 110. Is this an over spot? You think he's going to sling it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a number he's gone over in five of the nine uh, Buccaneers games so far this season. And the Buccaneers throw more than any other team in the league. They're doing so on 67% of their plays on the field. And they're also tied for second in red zone drives in the league with 28. And we're in the red zone. They are throwing the ball. So this is a great spot for Brady to go over that number of two and a half primetime game plus money on that too as well. I mean, if I'm getting plus money on Brady to go over his touchdown total, I'm taking that every single time. We love that plus money, honey. Uh, I (laughs) also see on your list here, Tom Brady over a half a rush yard. And just the fact that that's an over under always makes me laugh in general with some of these quarterbacks who aren't the most mobile. This is just a fun bet, right? Because it's so ridiculous that this guy has to rush for one yard for this to go over. But with that said, he's gone over this in seven of his nine games. He's run the ball at least three times in three games this season. Here's the amazing thing, right? For what he's on pace for so far this season, he's on pace for the sixth highest rushing total of his career. He's been in the NFL for like 40 years at this point. So that even that at this age, he's in the top 10 for rushing yards in his career is amazing. But truly, like, they love doing those QB sneaks with him. He doesn't mind doing that in the red zone as well if they're on the one-yard line. It's very likely that he could hit the over on this one. Let's just hope he doesn't do a couple kneel downs in the end to negate that after we've already hit the over. Oh, man, those are such a killer. I hate when that happens. Um, <laughs> but with Tom, okay, so you talk about him, the QB sneaks at the goal line. Um, is he worth an anytime touchdown, or who's your anytime touchdown bet this week? So, spoiler alert, I always do a little sprinkle on on Tom Brady anytime touchdown because that can happen, right? Mm -hmm. But Chris Godwin is the guy that I like the most here at plus 110. 24% of the red zone targets, and we talked about how much the Buccaneers throw the ball, are going to Chris Godwin, and that leads the team. That's almost 10% higher than anyone else on the team. Now, the wild card in this one is Rob Gronkowski looking like he's going to play in this one. He loves going to Gronkowski in the red zone. He had six red zone targets in the four games that he's been active. So that could take away from Chris Godwin. But Chris Godwin and Tom Brady have been hooking up all season long in the red zone. Like I mentioned, that target share is just absurd for him compared to everybody else. So at plus money for somebody who's getting as many looks as he is in the red zone, Chris Godwin, anytime touchdown, plus 110. Love that play. We've been talking a lot about the pass game. Any rushing props or running backs that you're targeting tonight? Yeah, I'm actually looking to take Leonard Fournette under 14 and a half rush attempts in this game. He's gone under that total in two straight games now, which is the two game sandwich in between the bye, uh, the bye week. He ran the ball a total of 19 times in those two games. And obviously, if the Bucks are passing the ball at the highest rate in the league, that means they're also rushing the ball at the lowest rate in the league. of the time they're running the ball. That is just so incredibly low. I think Fournette's obviously going to be involved in this game, but if this game ends up being somewhat close, which some people are talking about, there's another trend to throw out there for you. But Fournette, you know, I don't see him getting the ball a ton in this one. You know, can he get double digits? Absolutely. But I don't think he's going to go over 15 rush attempts in this game. A lot of bucks fire before we get out of here. Any love for the Giants on anything? Yeah, uh, you know, look at Kadarius Tony going over 43 and a half receiving yards in this one. Sean Murphy Bunting is supposedly being active ahead of this game. I don't know if that's necessarily an upgrade for this secondary because everybody who is on a secondary in the Buccaneers is getting torched right now. But he's getting a 22% target share without Sterling Shepard in the mix. That's almost double his season total. Great stuff, Steve. You're the best. That's Steve Buchanan over at DraftKings, our NFL betting analyst. And you got a lot of options tonight for Monday Night Football. Pick some winners. Have some fun. Gamble responsibly. That's going to do it for my guys in the desert. Rush Hour coming up next on VEASAN. This is 
This is Logan Ryan, captain of the New York Giants and host of the NFL Player Podcast. We're trying something different. An active NFL player hosting a podcast, which is for NFL players and legends, as much as it's for the fans. This is my first podcast, and I'm pretty excited about it. We're going to talk football, but also about lots of other issues that affect us all. We'll be talking with other players and legends, so it's going to be real and an honest look at life in the NFL. Listen to the NFL Players Podcast on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. I want to get back to kissing the cheeks of my grandbabies, making Sunday dinner with a house full of family and lots of laughs. <laughs> COVID-19 has changed how we live and how we feel, but now there are vaccines. And they are the very first step that let us get back to what we miss most. It's okay to have questions. Is it safe? Should I wait? Now, get the facts. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council. 